And I'm going to show you a fun little thing that's sort of based on a technique that I saw a few years back. But even before that, years before that, people were doing this kind of thing. And, you know, it looks like this. This is kind of the very 70s neurographic, neuro drawings. And this one is just plain black and white with semi ink, actually. And this one is um, black with color. And this was one I did maybe three three years ago or so. But I thought it would be fun to take the uh, hot press watercolor paper, the Nietzsche hot press watercolor paper, my favorite size, five by seven. I love the size because you can make this into a greeting card super easy. If you want to make any of these into greeting cards, you can. You can frame them. Five by seven is a frameable size. But, but working small for me is really um, easy, you know, that for me to create. I don't, I'm not overwhelmed with all this large format. You know, I just can work small and I don't have to worry. I can play. And today we're going to play with the, the paints and we're going to play with some mediums. I'm going to do something a little different. Um, kind of thought about it this morning. But my first one of these I did was just making circles, which kind of overlapping circles. And these remind me of bubbles. And um, just very relaxing overlapping circles. And then I just started to make swatches in those circles and then glazing, seeing what colors do in between, which is really fun. And I like this sort of a limited palette. And then I went a little, decided to do a little a color swatching, just seeing what, what a green overlapped with or glazed with a red and a green uh, glaze, what it would look like. And these are a great way to record color. So here's the ultramarine blue, the lizard and crimson. And then when you combine, you overlap them, you're going to get this really nice purple. So these are, th this is way, a really great way to do color studies. Uh, the purple lake mixed with the gamboge, look at that gorgeous color. So there's like ways, this is my favorite way. It makes a great exercise. Thalo blue mixed with the gamboge, look at the green. So those are um, just that's a great exercise, and we're going to do that. I'm going to show you how I did that. It's fun. And this was one I just did with granulating colors, and I did a little uh, thickening of the lines where the intersections are. I'm going to show you that. And I love these because they become more abstract, very fun. So I'm going to show you all how I did them all. So well, I'll show you the two techniques. <laughs> so I'm going to do the first one, and I'm going to take my paper, and I want to show you a trick about these so these padded, you know, they're padded on one side. And if you just kind of work the paper, and this is our, uh, just so you know, it is our NHP5. It's the cold, the hot press, which is not that smooth. It still has a little tooth. And I just kind of take it and I move it back and forth to sort of loosen that padding a little bit. Because sometimes if you're not careful, you could pair it. And then I just kind of bend it back. So I just keep this paper and I don't need to mount it or do anything. You know, I don't need to mount it on a, a board. And I'm going to take a, a, one of these little circle templates. This is a Staller combo circle template. I like it. It's made for drafting. It's got these little bumped raised edges. And I think that's just for inking. But it seems like I it seems like it works better for me to just do it on the smooth side, not the bumped side. And I like it because I've got all these different uh, circles that I can draw. And I'm going to do... Just start drawing. Oops, let me turn it over. I'm just going to draw the biggest circle first. And I'm going to take my uh, pigment liner, the Detail Master pigment liner, and I can choose whatever size. I've got a 1, a 7, a 5, 3, and a, and a point 0.1. I'm going to use a thicker one today just because I want to have some bold lines and also so you can see it. These are pigmented and waterproof when dry, so you won't have to worry about anything bleeding. And you can do these circles. So the way I do it is I start and I just make my line very slow. And I kind of meet it up at the end. And I just lift my template up in case there's any, you know, I don't want to smear it just in case any ink gets on the template. And now I'm going to take a second circle and I'm going to put it over in this part of the paper. And I'm just going to go slowly, mindfully, just relax. The only way to make a perfect circle is through something like this. But if you want to just use like a tape, you know, the outside and the inside of a tape roll, or you can use a dish, there's all kinds of ways you can make your circles.
Now I'm going to do a third circle, and I'm going to do a small one right here. Okay, and then I'm going to do some overlapping circles. Now I'm going to just, I've got the three circles, and I think I want to just take this one and overlap it so I have a space, something like maybe even that much, so I can do some glazing. I want to try some glazing with my watercolors. I've got one overlap, and then here I can overlap maybe, oh, that would be fun. Overlap, move that out of the way. Just overlap these two and you can do as many circles or as you know as few circles as you want it's just all up to you and it's just a fun fun thing to do i'm going to do maybe just going to kind of go out here maybe there the more circles you do the more time your painting will take to do but that's all right so i've got these six circles and now i think i want to connect let's see where do i want to connect these maybe right there and I'm just going to do this. And the one millimeter is really nice to get a bold line. I think that's really nice. Leave it like that for now. I have room around the outside to do other things. And now I'm going to take my uh, five. I think it's going to, I'll take my five. And I'm going to do the intersections. I'm going to make them a little bit uh, wider. So what it is, is I'm going to take my uh, pen and I'm going to create a little diamond, kind of where the curve curve is it's not it's like a little diamond if I can show you I'll show you close up and see I just did a little diamond and then what I'm going to do is just fill that in with my pen that's one way you can do this you don't have to redraw the circle if you don't want but if you want to you can actually thicken the lines in the circle but each of these gets the little diamond it's like a like a curved actually it looks like a kite here I'll do it again show you a close up again Hope you can see that. Okay. And then I just fill it in. That's the easiest way that I know how to do this. There's probably other methods, but now I just need to go to every single intersection. And then like this one, that's a little different. I'm going to take the curve, the curve, and just kind of go as if I'm kind of going on an on-ramp or an off-ramp. And by the way, we do have a video High resolution video of this technique that is unlisted right now because in case we decided we're going to do this for the next few months and we're going to actually Koki's here too yay is Koki here like oh and Wendy oh Wendy yeah awesome yay so what I'm doing is I'm just creating this relaxing imagining a freeway imagining an off-ramp when you got to get off the freeway <laughs> and you have that curve that happens, you just kind of go off the freeway. And then this one, I'm just going to connect these two. This isn't necessary, of course, in this exercise, but it really slows things, slows your mind down. You know, it kind of helps you to just, it slows things down and it also gives you a con high contrast focal point, basically. And I'm just going to do it here on this side. And Basically, I need to do all the circles. Now, if I had thought of this ahead of time, I would have planned, I would have prepared one ahead of time for you <laughs> instead of making you look at every single uh, one I'm doing, but at least you get this in real time. It doesn't take long to do these drawings. It really just a matter of the amount of circles you want to do and the amount of uh, intersections or overlapping of the circles. So you can see, I'm just looking for intersections, places where there are sharp, sharp uh, curves. You want those sharp areas to be rounded out. And that kind of creates a nice flow for your eye. It also is good for your mind, your eye head coordination, your sense of calm. I think this calms me if I'm not usually talking during this. I really find a very a relaxing, um, feeling that I get from doing this. Just simple black and white. I'm not bringing in my colors just yet. And the reason I'm not going to bring them in just yet, I'll show you why. Okay, so I've got my first drawing. Now my second one, I'm going to show you, I've got this prepared on a piece of, I've got a piece of uh, tape. And this is a, I have to tell you, I've now discovered the most incredible tape that doesn't bleed. 
I've, I've, it's amazing. It's called Nitto Tape, or actually Holbein makes it. Let me see that. I'm going to show you that because Holbein makes it in all different. And they call it something. I forget what they call it. But, it, but Holbein does sell these tapes in all different widths. But the brand is Nitto, N-I-T-T-O. I can't find it when I type in Nitto, but if you could, whole, whole bind in an art supply warehouse. So if you go to artsupplywarehouse.com, you they have it on all sizes and I bought them all and I just think it's fabulous because it makes the crispest lines that you could ever have. So here's my technique now on this one. I'm going to make three circles and that's only three. So I'm just going to do what I did. Oops. And I'm going to use the bigger, thicker pen. Okay. I'm just going to go and make my first circle. And I can see I have a little bleeding. Oops. You know why? Oops. <laughs> I picked up a perma writer by accident. Perma writer is a permanent pen. And oops, I picked it up by accident. And that's why I have a little bleeding, but I'm not going to worry about it. It just became, it kind of soaked in and I got alarmed immediately. It's like, what? Why is it soaking in? Well, it's, it's a perma writer. And I'm going to do a second circle, different size, just vary the sizes a little bit. And a third one, maybe this big one right here. And I'm not overlapping these circles because I plan to do lines, mindful kind of random lines. So here I go. Now I see this little place that kind of looks like it has a little boo-boo there. So I'm going to start my line there just to kind of pretend like it didn't happen. <laughs> and I'm just going meandering through and I'm going to just kind of crisscross and crisscross. And that's all. I'm going to leave it like that. Very simple. And I could do the same thing, taking my pen, my little five here, and do the intersections. Then what I'm going to do is going to bring out, after I've done this little drawing, I'm going to bring out the watercolors. And I'm going to show you some fun things with the watercolors using mediums that I've just started to try using with the Niji watercolors, and it's a really fun effect. So creating these little little sort of joints or neuron, neural pathways, whatever we want to call these, little highways, and these make it really more interesting. And you can change the thickness of your line. Anyway, if you want it to just make it a little thicker, just go take that line and just kind of go along the line. And then you're, you can actually take that and just sort of move it along your drawing. Like here, I'm just going to kind of bring out a little more thickness. And then I'm going to curve that, make that curve happen. For soon, this is a kind of looking like a dry pen. And I don't know if it's this, I've got hand lotion on and I think I've created a, resist but we'll see we'll see sometimes i put hand lotion on before one of these lives and then i think why did i do that <laughs> you should really not use hand lotion and do art or watercolor after that all right so i'm just kind of running my pen along this is where i usually play relaxing music or i listen to a podcast or something you can just kind of you don't have to be thinking. You just got to find the little intersections and, and smooth them out, round them out, just by kind of curving those lines and then filling it in. Here, I want to do a thicker one, just kind of thicken that up right there and then just have them join. Now, these little crisscross ones are a little more, you just have to think about the curve. So go take your line. I don't know if you see that I just curved around like I just went off the freeway getting back on the freeway and going back on. That's kind of how I do that. So I'm hoping that, oh, Nita's here. Aloha from Hawaii. Or I, aloha, I wish I was in Hawaii. <laughs> Evelyn's here. All these people are here. I'm so glad you're here. We're having a good Friday, a good day today, creating and doodling and watercoloring the best things possible. I think anyway. And so just going to finish those up. <clears throat> Actually, I don't have to finish this. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I talk too much. Finding that 
It's just nice. This is a relaxing activity and I really don't need to talk. Dead air is okay, right? Is that right, Phoebe? I'm gonna... <laughs> of course. Sorry, I always have it muted on my side, so it takes a second for me to come over. <laughs> yeah. And I... Yeah. It's kind of like a, this could be something you could do. I hate to say this while you're in a meeting, <laughs> but you could. <clears throat> and you could still be able to talk. You could listen to your, you know, people talking. Of course, they might think it's rude that you're doodling. But I always found that I get my best doodles when I'm kind of distracted doing something else because my right and my left hemispheres um, start, you know, I can work independently kind of. They say you can't, but I think you can multitask. So I'm going to go, maybe it's not true, but I'm going to just think it is. All right. So I've got all the little intersections. I think, oh, one's missing. I see it. And then I'm going to start watercoloring. This is where we're going to have the fun with paint, playing with the glazing and the watercolors. Now there's another thing I like to do. I always do it. I don't know why. I take I like to take a pen. I'm just going to grab this. I want to show you the granulating exercise I did today. I started playing with the, some of the colors and then using the granulating medium. But I, this is just a little swatch of blue. But I'm going to do something where I'm trying to activate my pen. And this is another, this is my Molotov marker. And for some reason, it's been giving me fits. It doesn't like to, it has been a bad pen. So I'm going to show you what I do to try to activate it. And I wish that somebody would come up with a pen that doesn't clog, a white pen that doesn't clog. But I take a, this is a baby wipe and I kind of wipe it and I shake and I kind of dampen the tip and I sort of push the plunger down and then I can sort of get that nice white line. There we go, got it. That's kind of how I get it going. So I always like to put a little dot right where these little intersections are. It kind of looks like to me a little sparkle or a just a spark in the neuron, you know, like thinking about your your brain activity, you know, things are sparking along in their healing, they're doing all kinds of things. So let's just pretend that that's what these, that these are. So I just put a little dot, a white dot in each of those. You can put a metallic dot, you can put all kinds of things in it, but there, that's it. So let's go back to this one. Now that that's, well, wait, we'll do the watercolor on this one in a minute. Okay. So I've got my watercolors here. I'm going to take my Niji Essential Mixing Set. And I love this one because it has, they're all transparent colors and you could mix any color that you want. I'm also going to try using some Gonzai watercolors, which are Japanese watercolors. And I'm going to try the granulation because I'm really dying to know <laughs> what the granulating does. The scratch of the pen and paper is very soothing. Oh, yes. Interesting thought. Interesting. I never hear the scratch. But, you know, I guess if I pushed hard enough, I would. All right. So I'm going to try. I think, you know, I've done a lot with these and I'm going to, I'll show you these on the other one. But on this one, I want to show you. No, I'm going to go back. I'm going to show you the the other technique with these and I'm going to show you the glazing with these. So you can see transparent colors are much better for the color study. So I'm going to take my, let's see, the number four. Uh, fusion brush, which has got a nice tip. I think it'll be to go inside these lines really well. And the last thing you should have is your a paper towel ready. Right here, I'll just have a paper towel ready. I've got my um, water, and today I'm going to use distilled water. I've decided to try just distilled water because I want to see if it makes a difference. I have hot, lots of minerals in my water here in Arizona. I've got very hard water, so I think it'd be fun to see what these mediums do and using uh, distilled water. Now I have some iridescent medium and granulation medium. These are made by Winsor Newton. And I this Winsor Newton bottle has a childproof bottle. It comes like this and that I never can get control with these big bottles. So what I did was I found these little cute little needle tip bottles off Amazon and I put my mediums in that. And that really makes it, you know, so I have more control. So let's try some granulating fun. Let's do, actually, let's do one without granulation and maybe one with. Now, the way I do these is I'm going to fill each circle, the, the well, this one and this one, with one color. So I'm going to go ahead, or with a color. 
And I'm going to start with a phthalo blue, which is this one. And I'm going to put it in this petal here. And it's a nice mount. And just, I think I'll just do a whole blue circle right here. Just with no granulation medium. Let's just see what it looks like. Because it's a transparent color, it's uh, not going to cover the black lines. Now, if you have an opaque watercolor, it will cover your black lines. Or if you have metallic, it's going to just, you know, go right over it. This is a great way to practice smooth washes and uh, color mixing, color glazing, and just color study in general. There I go. I've got my phthalo blue wash. And I'm going to move over. I'll um, put a little bit more over here. I'm going to move over to a circle that's not touching this one. And I'm going to do some alizarin crimson hue, which is that color. I'm going to do just that by itself. And you know, another thing too, is if you just take some a little uh, water, activate your colors before you, you start, and then you'll have a more much better experience. I think I'll do the alizarin hue in this one. I'm just going to go all the circle all the way. I'm not looking at the overlaps. I'm actually just looking at the whole circle. And I'm just going to do it right inside. These brushes are phenomenal for getting into tight corners, but also if you have a big enough brush, which this one is perfectly perfect for this one, you can get nice, uh, you can get wide areas too. So an even wash, not scrubbing too much. I don't want to scrub the paper. I'm just trying to get a nice even wash. And then I'm going to do a yellow, the gamboge hue. And I'm going to put it right, well, let's see, since I have the only circle that's not touching is this one. So I'm going to go ahead and do the gamboge yellow. Whoa, that's a bright yellow. Very pretty though. That's a great mixing yellow. It, it really, it makes, it's just gorgeous. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to just get that little edge all done. There we go. Now I've got my primaries. And I'm going to clean my brush. And if I do something, all right, so this one, it may be dry. This one, maybe not. I should have gotten a heat gun. <laughs> but that one's still wet. Maybe I'll do some a color right in here. All right, so let's see what happens when we mix the red, the, the alizarin, with, let's see, a color. Let's do ultramarine blue in this one. So I'm going to take ultramarine blue, but I'm going to add a little granulation medium just because I want to try it. I'm gonna, just going to put it in this, uh, right, this little dish right over here, and I'm going to put a little granulation medium in it, just a tiny bit, instead of water. Let's see. Here we go. Just drop it in. Oop, that's probably more than I need, but at least I want to get some more color there. Okay, so now I've just mixed. I've got some granulation going, I think. We'll see if it happens. It takes a little while. To, the granulation sort of takes some time, but I'm going to go ahead and, and just do a glaze, um, a medium value glaze of that blue over the red. I mean, in that circle, basically. I'm just going to overlap wherever it over where that circle is. And so I've got that new color underneath and I am seeing granulation, how fun. Oops, I went outside the line, oh no. <laughs> if you do that, if you don't want your um, colors to go outside the line, just dab it up with something and there you go. So now we'll see how that looks as it dries. That's pretty, I might even do another layer. This is a wet into wet wash where I'm just kind of deepening it a little bit because I like that. I think the granulation is going to look really nice because these are all transparent colors. They're not going to make mud. There we go. I like that. Now let's see if I can do, eh, let's do this one. So what color would be good? I'm going to do the burnt sienna. No, no, no. I want to do that gamboge again. I think that's so gorgeous. All right, I'm going to take it and I'm just going to do gamboge right over the red. And it looks like a gorgeous orange, really nice. I'm just going to make do the circle. So this is a very simple color study. It can be made into just a mindful activity, or you can use it as a fun little card. You can make this look like a balloon if you want. Or Actually, if you didn't do the little um, intersections, you might be able to do a, a balloon.
So we've got the yellow. See how that beautiful orange color kind of popped up? Now let's try some Payne's gray or indigo. Let's see, indigo would look really interesting over here. And I want to in I want to take the granulation medium and put it in this dish. And I'm going to do a little indigo in, in the tray. And each pigment's going to behave differently with the granulation medium. So it's going to be fun to just see what it does. I'm going to put a little bit less this time. Oop, that squeezed out more than I wanted again. That's all right. Now I'm going to put this in this section here. No, I said I was going to do it up there, didn't I? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to just do a indigo. It needs a little more than that, a little deeper. And I'm just going to do an indigo circle. Oops. And I want to see what indigo does when you mix it with the alizarin. And then we want to see the granulation. It's not as dramatic until it starts to dry. But this kind of thing for me is just super relaxing and super fun. And it's easy for people of all skill levels to do to practice your watercolor skills. There it is. It's pretty. We'll let that sit. Watch, see what it does with the granulates. It's starting to, when it dries, it should granulate a little more. Now there's one more color I want to put. I've got one more opportunity to mix a color here. And I'm going to mix something uh, I'm going to mix the Viridian and see what happens. Or the, no, actually, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to mix the Purple Lake with some granulation medium because I really want to see what that looks like. I'm going to mix it. I'm going to make a nice deep value of the Purple Lake. Hope everybody's having enjoying. <laughs> I can get caught up in here for a whole hour and all right. I'm going to put a little bit of granulation. This time I'm going to try to just get a drip or two. There we go. I just got a drip. And I add a little more of this purple lake and then just kind of mix it up. And I'm going to put this in this circle that's remaining. Oh, that's gorgeous. That blue mixed with that the ultramarine blue mixed with the purple lake is so gorgeous. And I love the, uh, what happens with the gamboge because it kind of looks like a warm, you know, it's almost like a reddish. I don't know. It's a pretty color, though. Oop, went outside the thing again. <laughs> there we go. See how you can clean up, kind of clean up your stuff. And if I wanted to, I could make that line thicker on the outside. So there it is. Let's just wait for that to dry and we'll come back to it when I have some ideas for you. So you can write the names of the colors. That's what I do. I just kind of like for the color study, I'll get the smallest pen see of my I got I've got the number three and this one was um this one was thalo blue so I'm gonna just write in my own lettering thalo I forgot I spelled it wrong it should be p-h-t-h-a-l-o <laughs> blue then I remember so then this is like a great study so you can always go okay this is what I did. And it makes a nice little study card. New Gamboge. And then this can be with any of your watercolors that you have in your stash. Just try. Try them on. There we go. And then this is ultramarine. But you get the idea. I don't want to bore you with that part. <laughs> Isn't that pretty color? Isn't that gorgeous? That's Purple Lake in the Niji uh, Essential Mixing. I'm just going write, to finish writing this and then I'll stop. If I don't rem if I don't uh, write it down now, there I'll remember that. Then I will forget what I did. All right, so that's one. That's one. Now let's go to this one. This one is one that I started. Now this one can be approached differently. So for fun, I want to try the Gonzai watercolors. I told you I would. Let's try. We got this eight piece set, which I hope I know we have it in a set or in a kit. I don't know if it's here yet. Phoebe, is it here yet in uh, stock for individual sale yet? Not yet, but soon, very soon. Okay, so right now it's in a kit. It's in our Gonzai watercolor kit, which is a great kit because it has the Shikishi boards and Gonzai watercolors. But um, these are, I'm going to show you the colors just when you'll see what I mean. You'll love this because they're both, this is actually, there's really no duplication. There actually is no duplication of colors in these two sets. 
So you've got a full range of wonderful colors, including um, a very beautiful gold and a be beautiful pearl color. I've got my, let me get my granulation medium just to play. So I'm going to do this kind of an idea of sort of staying on the same color palette rather than going mixing the oranges and the reds. I'm going to do mostly blues or cool colors. So I'm going to start with this one. And I don't know what that, oh, that's black. I don't want that. <laughs> I'm going to do this gorgeous blue in this set. This is the WC2, just going to tell you, because it's a WC211. We've had this for a little, long time, and it's just a really gorgeous watercolor. And you can use it with all any colors. There's no, there's no, I'm going to mix it with that one. Just why not? Because I have the color there. Look at that gorgeous blue. It's a gorgeous kind of cobalt blue. I'm going to put a little granulation medium in it. Let's see what happens. Look at the ring. It's kind of making a ring. So it's separating the pigment, which might be a very interesting effect. And I'm going to find out. So I'm going to do the blue. Just going to put it on in this circle. And I'm just going to do it very kind of going from, if you can see, I'm taking my the tip of my brush and I'm kind of bringing it to the edge. And that kind of makes it a little, and I'm rotating my, my paper, makes it a little easier to get those, or, you know, the edges nice and sharp without going over, <laughs> which is what I did before. So the Gonzai watercolor is a little finer. It's a different kind of pigment. I mean, it's the same pigments but it has um, a different binder and it's just a little different. It's really intended for the washi paper, but it's fine on the sized paper. There it is, so there it is. Yeah, I don't know if it's granulating. Oops, excuse me, I just hit the, my head on that. Um, I don't know if it's granulating, we'll see if it does. I'm gonna do it now, another color. I think this color is the Viridian, or is it not? I don't know, it's a turquoise, it's so pretty. I'm trying, like I said, I'm going to try to stay in the blue colors. This is just without any medium. And I like, I think maybe the, without the medium, it might be better. It seems like it didn't granulate or it did, but I was looking for a smooth wash and the granulation does not allow for a smooth wash. It gives you that granulation. And that's something that is desired or not desired. It just depends. Huh. So we got that nice little circle. And this is an opaque color, so I don't think I want to use that. This is more, I think that's the green. Yeah, that's the green. Let's do a green one here. I'm going to do this one, this gorgeous green. It's like a, I don't know what green that, but it's called in the color names, the different Japanese names. But it looks like a hooker's green, hooker's green to me. It's a kind of a, on the cool side, which is pretty. I'm just going to go right to the edge like that. Okay. So I've got three circles, and then I have all these little wavy things, and I'm going to just take each of those sections and just sort of paint them out. Now, this color is a gorgeous color. I'm just going to do... And you'll see it's a different color than what's in the other set. This is from our eight-piece set. I'm just going to go to the edge of the paper and make that really intense. I want to deepen that a little bit right there. Now there's a granulation spray that I, and it's so smelly and it said, look at this warning label and it's made by Schmincke, but it, it does do the granulation, but oof, you want to do it outside. See, it says it's, it's very flammable and I can tell it is because when I inhaled it, it was just a bit much. Now, usually I like to take on these outsides. I'll do just like as in a painterly kind of fashion. I like to take uh, the paint, the same color and maybe do it three times on this. So I've got that turquoise color on this side and this side, and then maybe one more in place. And there's not a lot of opportunity. Oh, maybe on this side here. I'll do it right here. And then I'll just kind of go to the edge and I'll make sure that my, my circles are dry. So when you're doing this, you just don't want to be doing it on a wet circle. So let's see what this one, this one's like an indigo, I think. Yep. No, it's a green. It's a green. So pretty too. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to use it's really dark pretty intense color but it's gorgeous it's kind of reminds me of a forest mossy green and it is so pretty 
And it's pretty transparent. It actually mixes well with other colors. I'm just going to do it. And you can see how quickly these Gansai watercolors, Japanese watercolors, uh, dissolve and dissolve in the, they dissolve quickly. So that's nice. You can get a nice um, effect. Let's go. This one's still wet. Oh boy. I got, now I got to limit myself here. This one is the indigo color and it's gorgeous. Watch that. Oh, it is like a inky kind of indigo color, even though that's not the name, but it is gorgeous. And it's pretty intense. It didn't take much to get that activated in the water. I'm going to do that again over here. Right there. And one thing I didn't do is I didn't put that green needs to go somewhere else. So I'll come back to that. I did want to finish this so you can see when I take the tape off how gorgeous this looks. And another thing to keep in mind when you're working with this kind of like this is to think about your darks and lights. Oops, it's too too dry. Think about intensity versus like light areas. Leave some light areas of your painting and have some dark areas. And that makes for a very interesting composition. So you can see I've got a dark, dark values, and then I have lighter values. So it's, this kind of helps with the composition of that. Let's do a third piece, third one right here. And you can see I'm kind of going thick on this one because I want it dark so that it kind of contrasts with the uh, colors next to it. And when it does feel different, God, these colors are much, I don't know, different kind of pigment. So they just, or finely ground is what I think it is. It's not unnecessarily, I mean, there's some things are they're made out of mineral pigments and some are made out of uh, synthetic, but I believe these are all mineral. So I'm going to put this color over here, that gorgeous green, and I'm going to try not to touch the paint that I just did. So I'm going to get really close to the line, but not over it so that hopefully that those two colors don't bleed. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I've got that going. Now I see a composition happening here. I see some dark, some areas to do keep the light or keep lighter areas. And I'm going to show you now that instead of making a really diluted um, concentrated mix, I'm going to go very, very pale. There we go. So this part in here, I want to make it really light. So I'm going to take a color that I haven't used or a different color, and I'll just kind of make it really light instead of trying to be too saturated. It's a very, excuse me, pale, very, very light value, mostly water. And I'm just going to kind of fill in these little areas, maybe with two different kinds of colors. The one I already have in my tray. Let's see, I'll maybe bring, just turning it around just to see what I've got. And here I'll just, it's almost too dark. I wanted to go a little lighter, but it's okay. Watercolors do dry lighter, so I'm not going to worry about it. You see, it's like a quick, a pretty quick little abstract painting. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this indigo color, but really kind of keeping it. Nope, that's not indigo. <laughs> there, that's it. And I'm just going to go really light right in here, just like a gray, like a very soft gray. And if the colors bleed over, which I see there they are, it may kind of adds to the character of the whole piece. I'm not worried too much. But if it if you don't want those like those little areas to bleed like here, just wait for your uh, little sections to dry before moving on to the next. But I'm not doing that. You can see I'm kind of just going quickly here because we have only a certain amount of time in our little time together. All right. I love that. Okay, so here's the place it's bleeding over, but I don't care. <laughs> there. I love it. So this is one way. Now you could do glazing if you wanted to try little little uh, little exercises of doing other things. Now this, if you see notice there's really no granulation. So the granulation medium doesn't really work in that. But let me show you, give that a second to dry. And I'm going to show you what the iridescent mediums do. And this time I'm just going to do a little little exercise while that's kind of drying a little bit. I might do something with that. This one kind of bothers me because <laughs> it's just sitting there. It's looking flat to me. Does that make sense? It just looks flat, like the color is sort of not there. So I'm going to put some iridescent medium or 
even though let's just do this. I've got some beautiful pearl color. That's it. It's so pretty. And I'm just going to use that rather than it's pretty much the same idea. I'm just going to use what I have in here. And I'm going to take it and just kind of do a pearlescent glaze over my uh, sort of that blue that just doesn't look, I don't know why it's bugging me, but it is. <laughs> It just has that, it doesn't have, I don't know if you see it on the screen, but the color is very flat. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to just kind of switch it up a little bit. And I'm going to just put only in these two opposite little sections. And I'm just going to put that only in there. I need a smaller brush actually, but I'm just going to kind of wing it with the one. Yep. And when you lose, if you do lose some of your black lines, you can go over them and I'll show you after that dries. But yes, that kind of woke it up a little bit. I like that so much that actually I'm going to take a smaller brush. I like that really a lot. So I'm going to add a little bit of that in these two sections just because it kind of balances the composition out. And for me, you know, abstract work is really hard for me. It's so, you know, when I have something that I recognize, something that I, I, you know, I'm familiar with. It's easier for me to, to paint or draw. But when I do abstract work, it kind of puts me in this really place of unknown. And I try to just imagine, kind of look at the light and dark values. And then I start to think about it better. This also needs it too. <laughs> but this time, I'll keep it cool. There you go. I was going to put the yellow in there. And I thought, no, no, no. Just for composition, we'll just, ooh, that's, Nice and bright. And it's getting much more concentrated because I the water is dissolving the pigment and it looks really gorgeous. And it's also bringing some highlights that I needed back to the this little exercise. All right, that's probably good enough right there. So see how it brightened it up quite a bit. It just looks you know interesting. You can then do if you really want to be crazy you can put other uh, colors over it and then the places where these are sort of bled, bled over i'll just after that dries i'll go over it with a marker but i'm just going to take this off so you can see how crisp these lines are with this tape first i need to find the place where i here we go the last one and you don't have to worry about it ripping it doesn't tear the paper which is great because a lot of tapes do they make a sharp line but then they also lift the paper and i haven't I'm going to mute myself just for a second. back on. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I had to mute myself because I had a total frog. <laughs> it was in my throat, so I needed to, 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 you didn't want to hear that. So anyway, there it is. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And I just can't wait to, I don't know, maybe I'll put some words inside or I can doodle with a pen or gel pen. I think it'd be fun. So I'm going to go back. So anyway, does anybody have any questions? It's like only, it's like, two, I can't believe 50 minutes have gone by. That's how quickly it was, does anyone have anything, you want to see anything that I could show you? I've got some ideas. Let's say we go here, let's say you could do things like add little colors. If you want to add dots, you can make it, oh, this would be fun. I'm just going to do this. I can't do it with this one. I'm going to do it. You could put lines going out. Like if you want to make, like make this look like balloons. Oh, this one needs, I know what it needs. It needs this. <clears throat> I'm add, I have to add that white dot. Just finishes it off. Yep. So quiet over there. Is everybody having fun? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think this is also a really nice live stream to just watch. <laughs> the colors are so I know, pretty. I just be quiet. 
<laughs> you you just like kind of hypnotized us all. Yes, it's very, it is relaxing. And I just kind of finished this off with these little dots. Because that really kind of, I don't know, it just finishes it off. Now, I did try doodling inside these circles. And I, I thought it looked terrible. I, I tried to make little lines and it just looked too busy. I found that just this, like this, looks really cool. I can imagine this as a birthday card, like putting some words, maybe, <clears throat> you know, sayings on here. Or you could take something like this and maybe draw some lines going out to represent balloons, maybe maybe bubbles. These all remind me of bubbles. So I would probably put a, a, a sentiment in here, like, here, I'll just do it. <clears throat> I don't know, what could I say? What could we, what does this look like? It needs to be, it needs to be, I don't know, <laughs> tiny bubbles. I'd have to think, but you could put little fish in here. You could put little doodles inside there. It just, it just sort of calls for, for things. I don't know. But um, here, this, I'll show you this one again. So this one was using the iridescent medium and I'm going to show you a little bit more this one was with some granulating watercolors, I think another brand. And I really love this one. But if I wanted to add, let me go back to this one that's still wet. Let me see. Let's say we want to do some things with this one. <clears throat> we want to try, let's try like maybe, maybe some marks inside. I've never done this, but I'm going to try. It's always good to just to play and experiment. This one, I'm going to just take what's in my tray already, and I'm going to do some little like little marks, like kind of like little raindrop things. And I just want to see if that looks good or if it's too busy. I don't know. Ah, I kind of like that. I'm going to do it again with the, what I have in my mix, maybe on this side. Just going to kind of go in here and make these little marks using the tip of my number two fusion brush. It kind of adds texture a little bit and interest, and it's fun making marks. I mean, I, I love doing these little, almost like little raindrops, and I kind of do it randomly. Ooh, that looks fun. See, that looks better. And then one thing that is sort of calling, kind of calling, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to leave things alone. <laughs> so I'm going to take, the show you what you do after you, let's say you have, this is the number five. So let's say you have areas that are, you want to bring that white out or the, the black line out. You just go back over the line just a little, and it kind of brings out that line a little bit here and there where you just want to kind of tighten that up a little. <laughs> I have my cat has been taking a nap right here, right next to me. And the other day I made a marble video again another marble video which i have to show you what i did afterwards <clears throat> but he was all over it getting into the paint <laughs> getting his feet is the back of his paw inky and it was pretty funny but uh i did something i had this little dream i don't know why i do this but before i fall asleep sometimes i get an idea and i thought i'm gonna try it and this morning i tried it as soon as I woke up, because I didn't want to forget, I'm going to show you what I did. In just a moment. So I'm just bringing out the light, or the bringing out those black lines again. And also, you can make instead of looking so perfectly circled, you want to, if you want it to look more organic, kind of just draw over it with your free hand, and you're definitely going to go off the line a little, so it won't look as manufactured or draft, look like a draft person did it. You will get a more organic kind of flow if you're just kind of using going around with your a pen freehand over it. So yes, there it is. I like that. It's fun. Let me just show you something. Since I know it's way off topic, but remember the last time we got together, we did marbling. <clears throat> so the marbling, this one, the bubbles are so fun, aren't they? This one was with uh, with some of the black. I'm going to show you the ink. This is the uh, silver black traditional Chinese ink. C C S eighteen and look what it did. It just reminds us the black shows on one side and then the silver on the other, and that's just using a marble, <laughs> just painting with a marble. And then this one was also the same with the black and the silver. But 
I had one that I really didn't like that much. It was just all black. And I kind of thought about just rolling interference color over it. And look what I got. I love this. Look at that. I don't know if you see that, but that glow. So it kind of shows the interference red. That's an acrylic paint. Interference blue and red. And I just rolled it over and it, it made these colors, just these little solid black areas where the ink soaked in. It made these go this gorgeous paper. And I'm going to use this for gift wraps or probably for a gift wrap or I can use it as collage paper. But look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I just wanted to share with you. <laughs> it's kind of just crazy that, that I thought of that and I thought it saved the picture. It saved it because I didn't really like the paper beforehand. And I may do the same thing with this one. Just roll it over. And if you want me to show you, I could. If I, we have... A couple of minutes. If you want me to show you how it looks, I think people want to see it. Let's we do just it. got a whole flurry of hearts, and they're so those are so gorgeous. Okay, so let's do. I want to show you. All right, we've got a few minutes, and I'm just going to quickly just move these out of the way, and because it's going to be a rolling, I'm going to be rolling. <clears throat> and I don't have a thing underneath my table, but that's okay. I'll just not worry about it. I'll get it. I'll just do it in the center part. So there, and it probably will fill through, but that's all right. It's really good. It cleans up really quick. And are those the oh. um, bushel, the 6H papers? These are the 6JM. Oh, 6JM. All right. So they're a little thinner. They're a little thinner. I'm just going to grab my paint. I'm getting the interference blue, and I'm getting interference red, because I think those are fabulous colors. But you can use any interference color, and the way these work is they're pretty colorless on white, but they're very, they pop on the black. And that's why I thought that would make a really nice contrast. And I'm not going to do anything fancy, except I'm just going to put it right on the paper. <laughs> and I'm going to mix the two because they look gorgeous together. This is, the, and I'm running out of this and I got to get more. And it's just going to kind of coat the paper. <laughs> Come out. Come on out. Okay. It's like a ketchup bottle, slow. <laughs> All right, come out. Maybe I'm maybe I'm out of it. There we go. It's thick. So that means it's old. I think I've had this paint for 15, 20 years. So it's probably had its past its shelf life. So now I'm just gonna look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm having it. Ah, one of those moments. The angels are singing. I just love what's happening because it's softening, but the where the blue, where the interference goes over the color, it just it's crazy. I want to put more of it over in areas where. It needs to be. Isn't that gorgeous? So now what we have is this incredible. See, there we go. That looks really cool. Now, maybe if I'd done it with a gel, I could do it with a gel plate, maybe it would be a thinner, you know, uh, a thinner film of it over. But oh, that I don't know if you see that on your end, but I am seeing these this gorgeous. We see it and it is oh, stunning. Isn't that fun? Angels are singing. I just heard that. I don't know. I heard that term on a TV show I was watching. So I just thought I'd adopt it when I get something that I really love when I'm playing. And I'm just going to kind of do it all the way to the edge. And then I'll clean up later with this old paint. I, gotta, I have to remind myself to order some more interference red because it's definitely, no, it's not going to go come out. I'm going to take it out of here if I can get it out. Yeah, I can just kind of pop it here and there like this, just kind of. Stick it on and get the last of that paint. And then, yeah, I'll just get some new stuff. And then just roll because the rolling will give you, won't damage the paper. The 6GM, the, the, this paper is delicate if you get it wet. But if you just kind of roll over it and roll over it carefully, especially if you're using paint that's kind of really wet. This is sort of dry, so it's okay. But um, yeah, you can get, oh, that's so gorgeous. Very gorgeous. Oh. I love it. Yeah, there it is. I love that. I'm going to put a little bit more over here. <laughs> and then just kind of keep rolling it until you get the effect you like. If you want to have most of the black disappear, you can just keep rolling and you'll see that blue and that red sort of interference color just kind of pops. I'm going to put just a little over here. So using Sumi ink, so you'll know what this is. This is Sumi ink that I used. Um, this one was... The, the Chinese, actually, Chinese, traditional Chinese ink, but you could use any black ink. And then here's the other side. So you can see what the other side looks like. And what this coating of 
acrylic paint does for this paper, 6 a.m., it's in a big pad. I did cut it down. It's normally a bigger size, but I had to cut it down to fit in my tray. It's on my, it's on my YouTube channel right now. I just stuck it up there because I was playing around the other day and I wanted to do a video, another video on marbling, and I just stuck it up there. So there it is. Isn't that gorgeous? Thought I'd, you'd have to see that. <laughs> oh, the Northern Lights. <gasps> I didn't, I missed the more Northern Lights. Is it going to be again? <laughs> I heard that we're going to have it again. So there you go. And then I'll probably do this one too. But you know, you can use an interference gold. This one has a little silver already in it. But see how, isn't it change it? It just totally makes it a richer uh, paper. So there you go. So I, that is like, a, now we've got a minute to spare, but you've got, I wanted to just pack in some fun ideas for you today. Um, but also, you know, if you just want to do some circles, it's a fun, it's fun to do the circles, the bubbles. I think I like the bubbles. They they just make me happy. Let's see them. These look very more serious to me. <laughs> and these are more happy. And I like to do them as like color swatching exercise. And I have a feeling I want to do this, turn this into something looks very holiday. If I threw some really sparkly stuff on it or put some sparkle dots on it, it might look kind of like snow. I don't know. <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> Look north. Oh, okay. Thank you. Take a photo. It's not, that's why I couldn't see it, Lynn. Oh, I, was, I will try to. Thank you. I'll, I'll get my camera out and I'll try to capture it. So how's everybody, everybody good? I'm going to just say hello um, to everyone. Let's see. I've, there's 34 of you and I'm just going to kind of put myself on there for a second to tell you I'm still, I still have my hair, everybody. <laughs> And I'm doing really well, everybody. So um, it's, <laughs> I had fun and I'm glad you had fun. And I'm going to put my, get my picture off of there for a second. There you go. And if you have anything you want to say, Phoebe, this is good. We can, any closing things you'd like to? Just a big thank you to you, Karen, of course, always hosting the really beautiful live streams. And this was a really fantastic one. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. We love hanging out with you. And please tag us if you decide to try these watercolor circles on your own so that we could share, like repost on our platforms. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's it for me. I just want to say thank you to everybody. And yes. we'll be back with another one in three weeks. Yes, so three weeks. Put it on your calendar. Three weeks. We will do another one. I'm not sure what we're going to do, but we'll surprise you with something. Yeah, we'll come up <laughs> with something good. Karen always does. <laughs> Who knows what we'll be doing? But you know, it's going to be close. That's a uh, wild wow, near the end of October, right? We're oh my yeah. gosh, it's crazy. So maybe we'll do some uh, gift wrapping ideas. What do you think? I don't know. I've got some ideas yeah. with this paper. Using doing some gift wrap ideas with this paper, and uh, yeah, we can have fun with that. So everybody have a really great weekend, and we will see you in three weeks.